Ah, the Czech Republic, the country of exquisite cuisine, culture and a yearly migration to Croatia every summer. The Czech Republic has an extensive rail network, in fact, it's one of the densest networks in the world. Unfortunately, what this country lacks is proper high-speed rail. The network is speed limited to 160 km or 100 miles per hour, meaning that even the fastest trains on the Czech rail network, the Class 680 Pendolino, can only go 160 km per hour, even though the train is certified to run up to 230 km per hour or 143 miles per hour. In this video, we'll explore the rocky journey of Czech high-speed rail and the plans to finally bring fast trains to this small central European country. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, we're so close to 1000 subscribers, so please help me reach this goal. Thanks and on to the video. Before we get into it, we need to define what high-speed rail actually is. Unfortunately, it's not just choo-choo train go fast. According to Britannica, high-speed trains are trains that travel at or above the speed of 200 km or 124 miles per hour. To achieve these high speeds, infrastructure has to be adapted. Tracks have to be made straight with gentle banked curves to prevent trains derailing. This involves building a lot of bridges and tunnels, because terrain is rarely flat and straight. Signaling systems, the things that manage the flow of train traffic, have to be adapted for higher speeds as well, like with this, the double yellow light. This indicates that it's safe to go, but warns the driver that after the next two lights there is a red light, which gives the driver enough time to slow down before the red light. Whole new tracks often have to be built to prevent interference by lower speed trains and to ensure the aforementioned straightness of the track. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's dive into the Czech high speed railways. According to the communist era magazine Železniční technika, plans for a Czechoslovak high speed rail network were drawn up before the 1989 revolution took place. The plan involved connecting most major cities of the Czech Republic and Slovakia with passenger trains going 250 km per hour on 155 miles per hour and freight trains going 160 km per hour or 100 miles per hour. With the exception of the proposed routes and speed limits, not much is known about these plans. After the Velvet Revolution of 1989, the planned routes were cancelled and Czechoslovak high-speed rail development was put on hold. In the early 1990s, planning of potential high-speed rail routes resumed and in 1990, another proposal was worked out. In 1992, negotiations with foreign rail operators and Czechoslovak regional governments began, based on the previous proposal. One year later, in 1993, Czechoslovakia split in two, into the Czech Republic and Slovakia. From now on, I'll focus on the Czech Republic. Apologies, my Slovak brothers. In 1994, the high-speed rail corridors became protected, meaning that future development would account for the project. Just one year later, another proposal was made. The map looks chaotic, so I'll highlight the borders of individual countries to make the map more legible. Negotiations stalled after the year 1995, probably because the financial situation of former Eastern Bloc countries looked like this. The next development came 23 years later, in the year 2017. In this year, the Czech government finally approved plans for the high-speed rail routes. The approved routes are these, RS1 from Prague to Brno to Ostrava, RS2 from Brno to Břeclav to Vienna and Bratislava, RS3 from Prague to Plzeň to Munich, RS4 from Prague to Ústí nad Labem to Dresden, and RS5 from Prague to Wroclaw. The planned speed limit is 320 km, or roughly 200 miles per hour. Some segments are limited to 250 or 230 km per hour, or 155 and 143 miles per hour respectively. This is usually due to unsuitable terrain, like the Krušnohorský tunnel, which is supposed to connect the cities of Ústí nad Labem and Dresden under the Krušná hory mountain range. The original proposal estimated the cost of the project at 500 billion Czech crowns, or roughly 23 billion US dollars, financed by the Czech Ministry of Transport and the European Union. As of the making of the video in July 2023, no high-speed rail projects have broken ground yet. Multiple segments of track are undergoing various environmental, geological and other studies, but no project was fully approved yet. The first project is slated to begin in 2025 and construction is supposed to start in 2027 between the cities of Prague and Nimburg on the RS1 route. 
an environmental impact assessment contract was in the process of being drawn up, but it was cancelled in 2020, meaning that the high-speed rail project will most likely face delays and cost overruns. To be honest, living in a former Eastern Bloc country, I wouldn't be surprised if at least some money was embezzled into the pocket of some corrupt politician. The latest cost estimate, completed in 2022, projects the total cost of the project at 800 billion Czech crowns or 37 billion US dollars, 60% more than the original estimate. Even though the project will most likely get delayed and suffer cost overruns, I believe that it will be worth it because... This pattern of initial cost overruns is not exclusive to the Czech Republic. For example, let's look at the pioneer of high-speed rail, Japan. Japan's world-famous Shinkansen high-speed rail network started out in the 60s as this, the Tokaido Line, connecting Tokyo and Osaka, Japan's two largest cities. The original plan estimated the cost at roughly 200 billion yen, or roughly 8 billion US dollars today. In the end, the project came with a price of 400 billion yen, double the original estimate. This cost overrun was the cause of massive controversy, with calls for cancellation of the project growing stronger. As a consequence, the president of Japan Railways, Sogo Shinji, and the vice president of engineering, Shima Hideo, resigned in disgrace. In the end, the project pushed on, the line was built and opened in 1964, and now, Japan is home to one of, if not the most iconic high-speed rail networks in the world. It carries hundreds of millions of passengers every year with an impeccable safety record. Since 1964, no one has died or been injured on board the Shinkansen train. The Shinkansen has become the best method to travel between Japanese cities at medium distances, beating out slower cars and inconvenient planes. I think that Czech high-speed rail could take a similar path. It will most likely face cost overruns and delays, but ultimately, it will become the best way to travel between cities in this country. Traveling from Prague to Brno in one hour and not in two and a half hours will be worth it in my opinion. Or crossing the country from Prague to Ostrava in one and a half to two hours instead of three to three and a half would be a massive improvement as well. In conclusion, I believe that Czech high-speed rail could be a massive benefit to the economy and mobility of the population while reducing carbon emissions. Thank you so, so much for watching to the end. This has been Tramley and I'll see you next week. Bye.